that spirit on today. John chapter 9, just a few verses that we're going to read. Uh, I really need to do the whole chapter uh, just in terms, but we know we can't do an exposition on everything. Uh, now, Jesus, as, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. That's enough, just for our understanding. I uh, just want to tag the text today. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light. You may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want, I want to do this a little different today, just something I asked the Lord to allow me to do. I got his permission to do it, but I want to, I want to tell this story uh, from the standpoint of a man who was blind. Uh, I recall the day, it was a, a busy day, heard a lot of turmoil, heard a lot of uh, noise around, and I was, I was wondering what was going on when I heard the noise, and suddenly... Uh, a man by the name of Jesus, um, I heard he was coming by. And as he came by, he, he noticed, apparently he noticed me. I'm telling this story from what has already transpired. He noticed me. And I, I thought about that, that little song that you all like to sing. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. He was on his way. Uh, he had had a confrontation with uh, the Jews and they were angry with him. They wanted to stone him. They wanted to get rid of him. But um, in chapter 8, end of chapter 8, it actually says that he left in the midst of them and he passed by and he saw a man who was blind. And a um, lot of turmoil, a lot of, lot of confusion, a lot, um, uh, lot of noise that's going on. And, and as he passed by, I heard his disciples say, Rabbi, who sent this man or his parents that he was born blind? I was, I was, I was starstruck by the fact that they asked that question because I grew up believing uh, that apparently my parents or, or I had done something while I was in my mom's womb that I was born blind but Jesus said and it, it just encouraged my heart Jesus said neither this man nor his parents have sinned um, he, he, he set up for the works of the Lord and I tell you I was, I was so inspired by that I was so touched by that uh, because my culture had taught me that um, apparently I had done something wrong. So I was literally living under a curse, the fact that I was born blind. But Exodus chapter 4 verse 11 uh, in your Bible actually says when God speaks to Moses, he says to Moses, who, who, made, who made the blind? Who made the deaf? Who, who made the mute? Is it not I, said the Lord? And I was encouraged to hear what Jesus said. And then after all of that, um, suddenly Jesus did something that because my senses are, are yet working, he says, we must work the works of him that sent us while it is day. And I thought about that. He said, because the night is coming that no man can work. And when he said that, I really didn't understand that. But after he died, after the resurrection, we were able to understand that on the night uh, that Jesus died, when he had already, he already declared himself to be the light of the world. And you know what light does. Uh, light has a way of canceling out darkness. Uh, light has a way of guiding us through the darkness. And uh, another thing that light does, it, it causes us to grow. And, and so I was, I was thrilled to know he would say that he was the light of the world. And he says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But he was already prophesying, ultimately, that he was going to die on the cross. It was going to be a dark day. It was going to be a dismal day. It was going to be a difficult day. Uh, but he was says that we got to work the works of God right now. And here is one of the miracles that John recorded that Jesus performed. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, I, I thank God for that miracle. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, 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 and as he said that I am the light of the world, as he said that I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day because of the rest of my senses are working. I, I noticed Jesus like he, he, he cleared his throat out. And, and as he did that, I know I heard it. I was kind of shocked by it. It sounded like somebody spit. And, 
and I'm thinking, I know, you know, you know how they say it sometimes that those of us who who may be blind, the rest of our senses are higher up than other senses, and I I know that's what I heard. I'm thinking, is he spitting? And then and then suddenly, not only did I hear the spit, but I I felt I felt his his hand coming up to my eyes and 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 it felt like mud or clay or something and he put it he put it on my eyes and then he he told me to go to Salom and wash I, I just did what he said and and as I went to Salom and washed I was absolutely amazed at the moment I washed my eyes I was able to see. You, you all sing another little song that says, He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that flood my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me. And he made me whole. He touched me, y'all. And, and so, and so, as a result, I could see. I could see. And so, I went back to my neighborhood. And when I got to my neighborhood, folk was saying, "Hey, it, isn't this the dude that 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 be begging folk? Isn't it? Well, how can he see? Isn't he the one that all the time he's sitting by the wayside and he's?" He's begging for help because he cannot see. And while they were saying that, I kept, I kept saying to them, I'm him. I'm, it's me, y'all. It's, it's me. But they kept going to one another saying, is that him, y'all? Is that? So, some of them were saying it looked like him. Some, some said it, you know, he, it sounded like him. But, but I kept telling them, it's me. It's me. It's me. And so, and so they asked me a question, how did you receive your sight? I told him, I told him it was a man named Jesus who, uh, who, who apparently spit, made some mud, put it on my eyes, told me to go down to Salom and wash, and I came back seeing. That's my story. I can't tell you nothing other than that. It was a man named Jesus. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. And, you know, I would think, you know, folk be excited about the fact when, you, when you're blessed and, you know, Lord, do something for you. So, they, so, they, so they, they took me. I'm not sure what happened, but they took me to the Pharisees. And, and when they took me to the Pharisees, uh, they told the Pharisees, this dude was blind, now he sees. And, and so, you know, I thought, I thought the Pharisees were going to be excited about the fact that I could see. And so they start saying, well, who, who? Who made you see? And watch this. It, it couldn't have been a man of God because he did it on the Sabbath day. Can't be right, you know. I mean, what, what are you doing? What are you doing seeing on the Sabbath day? I, I thought, I thought, I just thought church folk get happy. When the Lord do something for you, you know, I... I was kind of anticipating, man, they were going to jump and shout and, and give glory to God and praise the Lord and all of that. But they were angry. They were, they were mad at me. Y'all saying amen like y'all know something about that. I know, you know, I know I'm talking about time in Jesus' day. That's almost 2,000 years ago. Um, but but y'all, y'all, it makes it sound like some of y'all know something about that. So, so y'all are telling me that there's sometimes there's some church folk who can't rejoice over the great things that God does in your life that God will allow you to go through breast cancer and somebody can't rejoice because God gave you a healing um, somebody lost that job and they report in a testimony I got a new job and folk can't celebrate with you y'all are telling me that's a reality for y'all I tell you that's amazing I was I was amazed at that and they they just kept pressing it who 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 is the man that gave you your sight I told them I don't know I mean, I don't really know him. All I know is he told me to go to Salaam. I did what he said. I washed and I came back seeing. So they asked me, so what you think about this man? I say, he a prophet, man. He got to be a prophet. 
So no, they say this man is a sinner. I'm saying, hey, whether he was a sinner or not, all I know is. I was blind but now I see and, and, and these jokers cold y'all they were some cold I mean some cold bloody dudes man they, they go to the point they don't believe nothing I'm saying so they say where, where your mama and daddy I'm a grown man and they got to go find my mama and my daddy so they get to my mom and my dad and they say, hey, who, was that boy really born blind? Oh, oh y'all playing, y'all shucking, y'all been lying all these years. I said, no, he was born blind. Well, who made him see? Say, hey, who made him see? We don't know. He old enough? Ask him. You know, my, the, the, the issue, the reason my parents said that is because them same old Pharisees had said, if anybody say they believe that Jesus is a Messiah, they would get kicked out of the synagogue. Synagogue. Synagogue was the place that we used to gather to study the word of God, to read the word of God, to get an interpretation of the word of God. And they had threatened anyone who said that Jesus was Messiah, he would be kicked out of the synagogue. So therefore, my mama and my daddy just said, hey, um, he, he's of age. Just, just ask him. So, so they came. They came back to me again, y'all. They came. They came back to me again, and they said, "Man, tell us again who who gave you your sight." So I turned around to them. I said, "Listen, listen. I done told y'all this about three times already. If I tell y'all again, will y'all be one of his disciples?" Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, they really got mad with me. They say, "Who, but who you think you are? We we are Moses' disciples. You must be one of you must be one of his disciples." Because we've been knowing what we've been knowing for years And, and here you are going to try to tell us What we know As a matter of fact you were born in sin As a matter of fact We, we believe it's because you did something Or your mama did something that you blind You know, you know There's still some folk Who believe that today That when you see folk that may not be As well Well I would say balanced as you They blind they they're lame, they're, they can't talk, they can't hear. There are some people who question whether or not they are some good people. There are some people who question whether or not their mama or their daddy did something. But I come to tell you, y'all, this is God's world, and God can do whatever he wants. And I'm so glad Jesus came by, and when he came by, he literally changed my life. So, so I said to them, I said, I said, do you all know who he is? They said, no, we don't know this man. And I told them, I said, that is absolutely marvelous that you guys don't know who he is. The teachers, the preachers, you all are the elders. You're the ones who read the word regularly and y'all don't know who Jesus is. Oh my goodness, isn't that something? And guess what, you know, the, the truth is as long as this world has been in existence, there's never been a report of somebody who was born blind receiving their sight. And so, and so when we got into that, Pharisees start saying, you know, he's a sinner, he's no good man. But then, but then there are some other Pharisees who say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can't nobody, can't nobody do this if he's not of God. So that was a division between even them because they had a serious misunderstanding of who Jesus really is. Well, after all of that conversation, I tell you, I was, I was amazed. And I think somewhere in your Bible, when you get to the end of the chapter, right in chapter 9, when you get to the end of that chapter, uh, right around uh, verse, let me, let me find it for you, uh, for you all, uh, those of you that have your Bibles. When you get to the end of that chapter, uh, verse 34, they said, you, you're completely in your sin and, and you are teaching us. And so what did they do? They, they cast me out of the synagogue. They threw me out. Threw me out of church. Some of y'all didn't hear that. They threw me out of church because Jesus healed me. And, and so understand sometimes you're going you're gonna to run across some people who say they love Jesus and love God. And, and man, they could be some of the most cold-hearted folk you ever, ever want to meet. And I hope that's not you all. I, I really hope that's not you all because I, I really appreciate it. I'm very grateful for what Jesus did for me. I was blind. 
but he touched me and now I see it. So, and so at verse 34, 35, if those of you that are still following on, uh, uh, after they cast me out, guess who showed up? Jesus showed up. And, uh, and he asked me the question, he says, uh, uh, do, you, do, you, do, do you believe in the Son of God? Some of your versions will say, do you believe in the Son of Man? Now, now listen, listen, listen. I know, I know today some of y'all are really excited about the fact that I received my sight. I know some of y'all, y'all are, I mean, y'all just over bubbling over with the fact that I received my sight. But I got to, I got to tell y'all this. The greatest miracle to me, as great a sign as it was for me to receive my sight, the greatest thing for me is that Jesus came to me. And he came to me just as I was. I was weary, I was worn, and I was sad. But I found in him a resting place, y'all, and he has made me glad. Well, how, how do you ask it? You're asking, Lee, how did he make you glad? Let me tell you. He asked me, do you believe? And I said, Lord, I don't know him, but if, if you let me know him, I will believe. And Jesus said to me, the one who is talking to you, I am him. And, and guess what I did, y'all? I was so excited. Look at verse 38. It says, and he said, Lord, I, this is what I said, Lord, I believe. And, and when I said I believe, I couldn't, I couldn't hold my peace any longer. I, I had to worship him. I had to, I had to praise him. I had to give him honor. I had to give him glory. I had to clap my hand. I had to pat my feet because I was so excited about the fact that yes, I could see, but greater than that, he asked me, do I believe in him? And what that said to me, that now my soul is saved. My eyesight was changed and that's a wonderful thing. But greater than that, my soul was saved. And folks, I want to encourage you today. It does not matter how many cars you got. It doesn't matter how much clothes you can get. Doesn't matter what size house you may live in. You ought to praise God every day that he chose to come to you and save your soul. If you don't praise him for nothing else... There's some of you in here may never ever get that car you want, may never ever live in that house you want. But the one thing you can say, I got Jesus. And I hear somebody saying it every now and then, I got Jesus and that's enough. And what I learned, when you got Jesus, you already got everything you need. You got joy, you got peace, you got love, you got understanding, you got wisdom, you got knowledge, you've been redeemed, you've been sanctified, you've been satisfied. When you got Jesus, you got everything. And so, I don't, I don't need these anymore. I, I keep them around just to remind me of what the Lord has done but I don't I don't need these anymore because I believe not not only do I believe from a standpoint he physically gave me sight but he spiritually gave me sight he helped me to see him for who he truly is and and so let me let me just close thank y'all for allowing me this testimony time um, note, notice in, in, in all this commotion the Pharisees still hanging around and, uh, and in your Bible in verse 39 Jesus said uh, for judgment I have come into the world that those who do not see may see and that those who see may be made blind sounds like an oxymoronic statement doesn't it I came into the world for judgment he says that those who do not see may see you know what he's saying I came into the world to help those who needed help. I, I didn't come for those who, who had it all figured out. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't come for those who, who, who always saying, I see and I know and, and I got it and, 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 and I know what to do with it. I, I came to help those. That's what Jesus said. I came to help those who said, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to make it in this major world. I, I, I don't 
don't know which way I need to turn in order to be able to manage my family. I don't know what I'm going to do to be able to manage the money that he gives me. I don't know how to take care of a family as a husband all by myself. I don't know how as a mother to be able to raise and train up my children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. I don't know how to live in a world where there's mean folk all around me, but I hear the Lord telling me to love my enemies. I don't know how to do all of this, but I know if I say I can't see what I do know is that he'll help me to see and I thank God today y'all even though I was physically blind what I'm glad for more than anything else that now spiritually I can see I can see that I can't make it in this world by myself. I can see that I can't make it all alone. I can see that if he don't help me, my life is going to be a wreck. It's going to be a disaster. I know if he don't help me, when my loved one die, I will go absolutely out of my mind. I know that when I get sick, if I don't know him, I will literally make myself sick to death. But because I can see that even though I can't see everything now, I know that he causes all things to work together for my good. Can I get a witness, y'all? I know that he can make a way out of nowhere. I know I got some witnesses over here and some witnesses over there that once upon a time, you recognize that you thought you could make it on your own, but you recognize you can't do it without Jesus. Why? Because he is the light of the world. Here's the close. Verse 40 says, then, then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard, that, heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? Duh. I just told y'all in the previous verse. Now y'all asking this duh question. Look at verse 41. Jesus said to them, if you were blind, hmm, you would have no sin. In other words, if you would recognize that you are helpless, if you would recognize your need for spiritual encouragement, if you would recognize that you need somebody to guide you. Remember, that I was blind. And so basically everything that I wanted to do, I needed somebody to help me to get to where I had to go Lord I, I stumble so many times y'all I messed up so many times sometimes I'd walk and I'd trip over rocks and stuff but anytime I had somebody to help me they would tell me watch that rock they would tell me you're getting ready to take a step down they would show me where I needed to go but notice what Jesus says you would have no sin but now you say we see Therefore, your sins remain. Here's my closing word to you all. Anybody in here living your life thinking that you got it all figured out? Anybody that's living your life figuring that, thinking that the sun rise and set on you, as a matter of fact, you make the sun rise and set. In, 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 anybody in here thinking that you're the one who gets yourself up in the morning, and you're the one who take care of you while, watch this, while you sleeping at night. You, 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 you're the one who thinking that you're such a good driver that, that you speeding on the highway and you never have no accidents because you're just such a great driver. I, I, want, I, want, to let, I want to let you know. You, you're, the, you're, you're the ones who, 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 who look at people and, and you kind of make judgments of them in some kind of way you thinking you are better than them. If that's, if that's you, you in here tonight, G, G, today Jesus is saying through me to say to you that you can see. <clears throat> but as long as you can see, you can't ever be delivered from yourself. But if you ever decide to let Jesus be the light of your life if you ever decide to let Jesus lead you yeah we used to sing that little song let the Holy Ghost lead you let the Holy Ghost lead you let the Holy Ghost lead you all the way all the way from earth to glory to heaven let the Holy Ghost lead you all the way what I'm trying to tell you you need light in the midst of this dark world that's a lot of evil out there 
There's a lot of bad things that are happening out there. But the only way you're going to make it, you got to trust in Jesus who is the light of the world. I'm going to say it one more time. I was minding my own business. I was blind. And I was a beggar. But Jesus intentionally came. Jesus came and he intentionally spoke to my situation. I was blind. But now I see. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord forever keep you. Is our prayer.